Good day and welcome to another interesting topic of literature, my dear online learners. For today, we will be going to navigate into the beautiful world of literature and criticize certain literary masterpieces. Are you ready? By the way, I am Teacher Vern, and remember my name because I am your tour guide as we explore the beautiful world of literature. And I want you to get your notebooks, your papers, and your pens, boss and yourselves, have fun and enjoy while learning literature at your own pace. I guess your backpacks are ready, but before we start, let's have our prayer. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please show me how to spend this day sharing your love in every way. Help me to be kind to everyone, to play and love, and have lots of fun, shining your light and giving your grace, sharing your joy with a smile on my face. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Are you ready? No, you're not yet ready. What do you think is the important thing that we have forgotten? Very good! The rules! The rules that should be imposed to have a safe and meaningful trip while navigating the world of literature. Our first rule is that you are going to listen attentively. Prepare your notebooks and your pens for jotting down of information and for answering questions. Our next rule is that you are going to give your full attention. This means that you are going to disregard other things such as playing your online games. And lastly, you are going to connect to your teachers in case you find vague information along the way. But make sure to use proper way of raising questions to your teacher. But before we start, I will be going to show you our learning objectives for today. These objectives will be our guide on what we will be going to do along our journey. Our first objective is that, using the poem, The Man with the Hoe, the students will be able to identify at least 3 to 5 figurative languages accurately. Our next objective is that, using context clue, the student will be able to define the unfamiliar words and give its meaning. Our third objective is that you are going to relate the poem to a real-life situation by creating a slogan using recycled materials. And lastly, you are going to write a letter of response as a message or advice to the persona in the poem with not lower than 100 words. Look at the picture closely. What can you infer about him? From his facial expression, clothing, and pose. Uh -huh. What can you deduce about the time of day? Mm -hmm. What do you think is the man doing? Very good. Based on the picture, we can infer that the man looks hopeless and exhausted. It looks like the man is working in the dark and he looks very tired. His lack jawed mouth and the way he's leaning on his hoe make him so tired. Moreover, his clothing looks plain and appropriate for working in the fields. Based on the color of the sky and the weariness of the man, the painting could portray the end of the day. I guess that you're very excited, but to prolong that excitement, let's do this activity. Before diving into the lesson, let us first check your vocabulary. Try these words if you can answer. You are going to pick out the context clue that points out to the meaning of each italized words. Then choose the meaning of each word. Are you excited? Well, let's get into it! Number 1. Lawyers often distort to suit their purposes. What do you think is the word distort means? A. Is it balance? B. Is it explain? Or letter C. Is it twist? How was the first one? Okay, try this number two. God has dominion of all his creation. What do you think the word dominion means? A. 
control, B, duty, or letter C, right? For number three, bear narrow trees are a portent that summer is near. What do you think is the word portent signifies? A. Is it announcement? B. An indication? Or letter C. Is it significance? Try this new word again. For number four, despite societies and governments censure on drug abuse, there are still many users and pushers. What do you think is the word censure means? A. Is it full commitment? B. Is it favorable action? Or letter C. Is it strong disapproval? For your final vocabulary, check this out. AIDS is a dreadful disease because it is immedicable. What do you think the word immedicable means? A. Is it contagious? B. Is it incurable? Or letter C. Is it painful? How was your experience? Was it easy? Do you think you got all the correct answers? Well, let's get to know by checking your answers. The correct answer for number one is twist. For number two, dominion means control. Number three, portent means an indication. And number four, censure means strong disapproval. And immedicable for number five is incurable. That's great. Are you excited with the poem? Well, I am also excited. And together, let's hear the poem written by Edwin Markham, The Man with the Home. Bowed by the weight of the centuries, he leans upon his hoe and gazes on the ground, the emptiness of ages in his face. And on his back, the burden of the world who made him dead to rapture and despair. A thing that grieves not, and that never hopes. Stolid and stand, a brother to the ox, who loosened and let down this brutal jaw. Whose was the hand that slanted back this brow? Whose breath blew out the light within this brain? Is this the thing the Lord God made and gave? To have dominion over sea and land, to trace the stars and search the heavens for power, to feel the passion of eternity. Is this the dream he dreamed who shaped the suns and marked their ways upon the ancient deep, down all the stretch of hell to its last gulf? There is no shape more terrible than this, more tongue with censure of the world's blind greed, more filled with signs and portents for the soul, more fraught with danger to the universe. What gulf between him and the seraphim? Slave of the wheel of labor, what to him? Are Plato on the swing of Pleiades? What the long reaches of the peaks of song? The rift of dawn, the reddening of the rose. Through this dread shape, this suffering ages look. Time's tragedy isn't that aching still. Through this dread shape, humanity betrayed, plundered, proof hand, and disinherited. Christ protest to the judges of the world. A protest that is also a prophecy. O oh, masters, lords, and rulers in all land, is this the handiwork you give to God? This monstrous thing distorted and soul quench. How will you ever strengthen up this shape? Touch it again with immortality, give back the upward looking and the light, rebuild in it the music and the dream. Make right the immemorial infamous, perfidious wrongs, immedicable woes. O oh, masters, lords, and rulers in all land, how will the future reckon with this man? How answer his brute question in that hour when whirlwinds of rebellion shake the world? How will it be with kingdoms and with kings after those who shape him to the thing he is? When this dumb terror shall reply to God, after the silence of the centuries, the man with the hoe by Edwin Mark. For your activities, you are going to identify the different figurative languages seen in each stanza. Please indicate the line that support your idea. How was the activity? Did you find it interesting? 
Aha! Very good! How was the figurative language being utilized in the poem? What do you think is the main theme of the poem? What do you think is the best approach suited to the poem entitled, The Man with the Hope? At this juncture, we will be going to delve into understanding the poem. By the late 1800s, Jen Francois Millet, Man with the Hope, was a well-known private collection in San Francisco. The painting became one of the most famous in the United States at the turn of the 20th century. And with this, inspired the American poet named Edwin Markham to write a poem titled The Man with the Hoe in 1899. This poet became the headmaster of Tompkins Observation School in Oakland. He was inspired by the painting that he came up to write with the poem The Man with the Hoe where this poem tells about a farmer who is forced to work hard in the field without enough time to work control of the wealthy people. Markham undeniably uses hyperbole throughout his poem, such as bowed by the weight of the centuries he leans, this monstrous thing distorted and soul crunch. One possible answer we can draw to make the man's situation seem even graver to elicit sympathy is to use hyperbole to persuade the readers. The poem was divided into five stanzas, consist of 49 lines. To sum it up, in the first stanza, the poem describes the miserable condition of the former because of the cruelty of his master. In the second stanza, the poem illustrates the contradicting situation when the former should live freely and pursue dream but in fact, this farmer lives with adversity and in terrible fear. In the third stanza, the poem conveys that there is a big difference between the former who suffered and the ruler who live in happiness and bath with wealth. On the outer spectrum, the fourth stanza, the speaker satirizes the master to fix their mistakes and stop the cruelty because God created humans not to act arbitrarily. In the last stanza, the speaker conveys anger tone to the master. He believes that there will be judgment day in the future and that is the time the cruel master to have to be responsible for they will have done to their own people. The master being referred in the last stanza refers to the landlords or to the proletariat. Wrapping up, the theme of the poem engages with labor and equal rights and it also depicted the problem within the classes in the social triangle. The poem is a powerful message to uplift people from the grisly inhuman atrocities committed by our own kind. The poem can also be considered as a protest poem, one that is concerned with social justice. To attest if you have learned something today, and also to unleash your creativity, you are going to create a slogan that advocates the rights of our farmers using recycled materials. What you are going to do is you are going to take a clear picture of your output and you are going to send it to our GC. Are you still there, my dear students? Well, that's good to hear. For your assignment, you are going to write a response letter to the man in the poem as a message with not lower than 100 words. Use creativity and all the knowledge that you have gained today to come up with a meaningful and effective and efficient output. Thank you so much for listening today, my dear students. Always remember that in our search for knowledge and experience in life, we are always reminded just how lucky we have been. And one thing we must not forget as we live a single day on earth is always express gratitude to always express humility. That would be all. Thank you and God bless.